Hello guys and welcome back to another skill point guide video for Total War Warhammer 3 on Immortal Empires. Today we'll be going over Cleta and just, she's kind of a weird one. Um, there's a, she's, she uh, buffs quite a few different units, mainly the um, just skeleton archers but also the um, sep the stalker things, these things, like my words are, are escaping me today. Um, she does a little bit in her um, her special skill line a little bit. Granted, it's not like the best units to buff for a for the Tomb Kings, but at the same time, she does provide some agreed. pretty good bonuses there, especially because she's a good like area of effect um, buffer with the blessing of Asaf and then the upgrade or the true blessing, which gives more reload skill, base weapon damage, and armor piercing damage. And so the kind of I, I really like focusing my armies around that, uh, especially with the Tomb Kings, you kind of prioritize your armies, like this one's going to be your melee, or your Ushabdi army, you know, skeleton, you like your missile army, like you're never bringing like a balanced army for each one, because then you're not really utilizing them as much. And so, to begin with, I do like to go down the blue line first just to grab the Canopic Jars. Um, that way they're generating every turn, because you want to be able to get more Canopic Jars, that way you can start doing the mortuary court uh cult excuse me with weapons armor items so on and so forth um increasing your army capacity your hero capacity what have you um really good to get those growing as fast as you can so really like to grab that um, in that case now after that i really like to go down her red line mainly because you want to get down to resurrect um it's a really good way to be able to heal your units your undead so you'll be, you'll be able to keep regenerating your units as well um, you know, up to whatever they started the battle with, so it's really useful there. And wow. since she buffs the skeleton archers and the stalker and knight units so much, I usually do the arrows of Asaf and then also the stone sentinels. Um, those are the ones that she buffs the most. It gives them, you know, for the uh, missile units, more ammunition, more missile strength, which is good. Um, charge bonus, weapon strength, and melee attack for the other units, the serpent units. And then just getting reanimate. And then when it comes to these, it's kind of up to you what you want to do. Um, usually, I actually end up doing both, um, which is pretty rare for me. I usually don't do it, but she doesn't have too many other skills to spend on in her uh, skill tree. And so I like to grab the uh, tier 7 for the missile strength and ammunition, and then also the physical resistance, melee attack, and armor for the knight and stalker units, and then obviously resurrect. That way, again, you can get... Um, that regeneration uh, going uh, in an area of effect for your units there. Now remember the reason why I I do end up doing Dune Rider and the Blessing of Asp is because she's going to be the one that is prioritizing the missile based armies. So when I can recruit another Lord w when playing as Kalita, they're going to be the ones that have my infantry, up, you know, on. my artillery, my monster units, and then she's basically the support. Um, but then after the red line, Vengeance. I like to come in and do her special skill line. Um, I do like to grab the Asaf, the goddess of magic and vengeance, for the missile strength for the skeleton archers and stalker units again, and also the ambush success chance, which I'll get to it here in a little bit. And then just going through the rest of her skill line, this just up upgrades it from the blessing of Asaf to the true blessing, which is just a higher um, armor piercing missile damage as well base missile damage and also increasing their reload skills so they fire faster if we show there it just increased their missile strength because they're firing more often and then I do like to put two points into purified that way she herself has regeneration so that'll help a lot kind of let her be a tank really like to get the Libra Libaras best that way if the ammunition 25% for skeleton ar archer units all armies faction wide really good uh, faction wide buff there the embodiment of Asaf, again, buffing the Stalker and Knight units with more melee attack, melee defense. The Warrior Queen for giving herself physical resistance and also frenzy. And the Legionary Barrage, is, it's its not anything that's fantastic necessarily, um, but its it, it can be useful just to disrupt some enemy forces there. Uh, so yeah. Now as you're to this point, you'll have her Necro Serpent. I really like her Necro Serpent. Um, I'm not a big fan of chariots in the game. The melee stats and melee defense are just really wonky. 
and chariots in general in my opinion are absolute garbage if it's a single entity um, even these Slanesh chariots that have four entities in them uh, depending on the unit scale I play on ultra so they have four there um, it's just very unlikely that you're going to really benefit from them because you're constantly going to have to be cycle charging cycle charging cycle charging all night and day and uh, what that means is basically you're not paying attention to the rest of the battle because you're constantly having to worrying, or you're constantly worrying about them being stuck head. into melee. Um, so anyway, after the special skill line though, I do like to grab her some of her extra abilities up here. The big one is the return in madness for some extra physical resistance. That way right now she's up to 17% base. Um, getting her some fire resistance and hit points, that the fire resistance will just help offset the... Um, negative or the 20% weakness to fire from her regeneration the ceremonial bandages is pretty good for the missile resistance she's gonna be on her serpent in my campaign so she's gonna be a bigger target so she's gonna need more missile resistance again. there um, and in combining the two unless it's uh, magical missiles we're already almost up to 50% we're at 47% missile resistance there so a really good way to just debuff the fact that she's gonna be a bigger target the enemy is going to prioritize her that way especially once you start fighting some Skaven or the Dwarves right here in the uh, Mount Arachnos area with Thoric, you're going to need to be able to deal with um, his the Dwarves missile units there. We begin. Um, but after that, it's still have 23 points to spend. Now there are a lot of things you can do. Uh, you could go down the rest of her blue line, give her more ambush success chance, and you know get renowned and feared because we already did get some from the uh, As Ashaf, the Goddess of Magic and Vengeance. Personally, I like to go down her melee line, uh, making her a little stronger, a little tankier. Um, especially again because she is going to be a bigger, you know, entity on the battlefield. The AI is going to target her more, whether it's missiles, lords going after her, um, single entities going after her. She's going to need to be able to tank, even though she has regeneration. She still needs some pretty good stats in order to um, beat back the enemy forces there. So. Um, love the speed, love the desert strike, giving her more melee attack, base weapon damage, which that one's not as big of a deal, um, but the melee attack plus 40 is what I really like. The base weapon damage plus 60 isn't, isn't anything that great. I usually don't get the full plate armor because she already has 110. Granted, you can buff that up, um, but I actually like to save my uh, last few skill points to go down her blue line a little bit. Because um, I do like to grab the ambush success chance because she's going to have a lot of missile units and stalker units that way what? she'll have a good chance uh, just to honestly ambush people. Um, so I do like to grab the ambush success chance there. I do like to grab lightning strike for her. The campaign movement range for renowned and fear just for the extra campaign movement range. Um, the reason why I get the lightning strike one is because if she gets caught in an awkward situation oh, yes. again with her being the missile based army uh, until you start getting the, the um, knight and stalker units, which is going to take some time because I believe if we take a look, I believe they are a tier 4 unit. Um, yeah, tier 3 and tier 4 unit. Um, it's going to take some time. You're not going to have a whole load of capacity for them so it's gonna in terms of unit capacity. So it's going to take some time to be able to build that up. Um, and in, when you're in that situation, or before you get in that situation, you're going to have a lot of archers in our army. Um, and so you need to be able to um, just delay the enemy as much as possible, especially if they start bringing multiple armies to uh, to the fight. Um, and so yeah, that is how I level up Kalita. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. I know it's not necessarily what everyone would do. I do, don't go for Indomitable just because she's got pretty good leadership already. And again, she's with the, the type of army she creates with the buffs to missile units. And also the true blessing of Asaf. She's really not um, like way out, you know, in the out in the middle of nowhere fighting by herself. Like she can be out and tank a little bit, but also she you want her to be around your your forces. That way she's providing that buff. Um, it's only a 35 meter range, which isn't huge. It's not 55 meters, which would be ideal. Um, but that way you're just buffing as many units as possible. Um, and then for the ambushing, you know, that way the knight and um, stalker units have decent weapon strength. They don't have much melee attack or melee defense, um, but they do have 
magical attacks as well and so there's just a few things with that that you just have to pay a little more attention to but other than that I really like them um, it takes a little bit to get used to them the stalker units as you can see here they don't have a lot of charge bonus they're more about their missiles but the um, knight units have a pretty good punch and their armor piercing so you just kind of have to look at the stats double check the stats before you go and use them in those situations and you'll be good to go there um, but don't forget to leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed it and until the next live stream or video hope you guys have a good one and I'll see you later bye